microscopic way, there is certainly the whole of mankind, put us all in quarantine and lockdown, and made our lives basically a living hell. But where did this bee come from? What exactly happens when it enters our body? And is it true when people say it's a lab leak? Let's find out. Coronaviruses have been around for centuries, circulating between humans and animals, but have failed to stay for long or even cause an impact on our world. They were first identified in the mid-1960s, but were too weak to cause a pandemic among humans. Study and research points out the possibility of various animal coronaviruses dating back to almost 55 million years ago. These are believed to have mutated inside the animal kingdom for long without affecting humans until now. The coronavirus has had many outbreaks in the past, but they weren't as dangerous as the one today. There were a few small outbreaks in 2002 to 2003 and another one in 2012. The present coronavirus is said to have emerged from a city called Wuhan in China. Illegal meat marketing of mostly bats has been believed to have caused this condition. But current evidences actually suggest otherwise. SARS-CoV-2 is the strain of coronavirus that has mutated with high infectivity and is the current strain that is going on a killing spree. SARS-CoV-2 belongs to the family of coronaviruses that have been named after their crown-like spikes. SARS-CoV-2 can cause COVID-19, short form for the coronavirus disease 2019. The coronavirus primarily attacks a lungs and throat. The coronavirus consists of mainly four parts. The inner genetic material that contains the information for it to make more copies of itself, a thick protein gel for protection as it passes from person to person, an outer envelope that enables the coronavirus to merge with the host cell and a covering of spikes made from protein molecules. When an infected person talks, coughs or sneezes, these viruses spread through the air and land in your nose or mouth. Once inside our body, the coronavirus comes in contact with our throat cells. The virus then inserts one of its spikes in one of the receptors on a healthy cell membrane like a key in a lock which allows the virus to enter the cell. A typical influenza virus would then get inside the nucleus to access the genetic material inside the cell and make the cell produce more viruses against its will. But unlike normal viruses, the coronavirus doesn't need to get inside the nucleus, rather it can access the ribosome. The ribosomes use the genetic material from the coronavirus to create protein spikes just like the ones on the virus itself. These spikes are then carried in vesicles which merge with the outer layer of the cell, with all the components needed to create a new virus just beneath the outer membrane. A new virus starts to bud off from the cell. Thus, another virus is formed. This virus then starts to infect other cells, and the same process repeats again and again and again. And before you even know it, you'll become infected with the coronavirus. Now, the dangerous part of a coronavirus is because it deteriorates our immune system, letting other diseases into our body, and the virus itself causes a deadly disease known as pneumonia. Pneumonia affects all lungs. Each lung has separate sections called lobes. Normally, when we breathe in, air moves freely through our trachea into smaller tubes called bronchi, which then move through even smaller tubes called bronchioles to finally reach small air sacs called the alveoli. The airways in the alveoli are flexible. When we inhale, the alveoli inflates and when we exhale, it deflates. The alveoli are surrounded by small blood veins called capillaries. The oxygen from the air we breathe in goes into the blood cells in the capillaries and the carbon dioxide from the blood cells 
passes into the alveoli so that our body can get rid of it when we exhale. Our air passage is lined with an inner layer of mucus which traps any bacteria or virus which tries to enter the body. A layer of hair-like projection called cilia tries to push out any foreign particles which enter the body. These particles are then usually ejected through coughs or sneezes. Our immune cells attack and eat any viruses or bacteria that make it past the mucus and cilia. However, in case of a COVID-19 infection, our immune cells get weakened and other viruses and bacteria enter the body. Meanwhile, our alveoli get inflamed due to the infection and it leads to difficulty in breathing. Moreover, our immune cells also secrete fluids into the alveoli, making it clogged and leading to an inefficient transfer of oxygen and carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide level in our body increases exponentially and our body tries to get rid of it quickly, which causes a shortness in breaths. This is called pneumonia. Early diagnosis can help save the patient as untreated pneumonia may become severe. Pneumonia may cause difficulty breathing, chest pain, coughing, fevers, muscle pain and fatigue. Whether you would develop these symptoms or not, depend on age or existing medical conditions. Now, back to a question about where this coronavirus actually came from. The coronavirus is said to have been an outbreak from the illegal meat markets in a place called Wuhan in China. Bats have been the ones who have been blamed for this condition. But new evidence actually suggests that this coronavirus could have been a lab leak from the Wuhan Institute of Virology or the WIV. How? Let's find out. First of all, there's just no evidence that states that this coronavirus outbreak was from meat markets in China. It's just a statement from China with no specific proof whatsoever. At first, this lab leak hypothesis was seen as a conspiracy theory. Then, as more evidence was uncovered, this lab leak theory seemed more plausible. There have been a series of factors that have elevated the lab leak theory from a conspiratorial speculation to an increasingly plausible possibility. Then, there's just this flurry of scientific revelations over the last few months. A key aspect of this is a coronavirus sample collected by the WIV from a Chinese mine shaft in 2013 that has been linked to a pneumonia-like illness that afflicted six miners in 2012. The bad origin coronavirus since identified as RATG13 have been found to be over 96% similar to SARS-CoV-2 which in fact causes COVID-19. This has fueled speculation that SARS-CoV-2 might have emerged from RATG13 following a gain-of-function research which involves manipulating pathogens in a way that they gain an advantage in or through a function, such as increased transmissibility. Global norms for reporting infectious diseases require countries to flag disease outbreaks to the WHO. In today's world of easy air connectivity between countries or continents through aeroplanes, diseases take very little time to travel from one country or one continent to another and lead to a pandemic all over the world. COVID-19 has been proof of that long-held hypothesis. If the outbreak is of an unknown disease, the urgency to report is even more. That is why the belated unearthing of a 2012 disease outbreak among miners in the Yunnan district of China and the fact that WIV researchers probed the outbreak, isolated a novel virus, RATG13, a coronavirus, but did not report it to the WHO, has raised hackles. In a paper published in the journal Frontiers in Public Health in October 2020, 
scientist Monali Rohalka and Rahul Bahlika of the MACS Akharkar Research Institute and BAIF Development Research Foundation wrote the story of the minus outbreak. In that they wrote, it was found that RATG13 or COV4991 was collected from a Tongwan mine shaft in Mojiang County, Yunnan province in China in 2013. Surprisingly, the same mine shaft was also associated with a severe pneumonia-like illness in miners in 2012, killing three of the six infected miners. The thesis concluded that SARS like cove originating from the Chinese horseshoe bats was the predicted causative agent. The cases were remotely monitored by a prominent pulmonologist in China. Retrospective analysis of the pneumonia cases shows striking similarities with COVID 19. China's reluctance to let anyone approach the abandoned copper mines or to collect samples from there has added fuel to the conspiracy theories. In a June 2020 conversation with Scientific American, WIV researcher Shi Zheng Li, known as Bat Lady because of her work on zoonotic diseases of brat provenance, said the miners had died of a fungus found in bat fecus and not an infection by the SARS-CoV-2 cousin. It was only in November 2020 that Chi Zhengli and her team gave information about the SARS-related coronavirus strain RATG13 and linked it to the minus outbreak, thus crossing her own statement. RATG13, a coronavirus found in bats at Mojiang County in Yunnan province, is supposed to be the closest known relative of the SARS-CoV-2 virus. The two have a 96.2% similarity. It was collected from the fecus of the horseshoe bat there in 2013. One of the differences between RATG13 and SARS-CoV-2 is the furin cleavage site. It has been widely speculated that the introduction of this furin cleavage site into the RATG-13 happened in a lab as a part of the gain-of-function research being conducted at the WIV. The November 2020 addendum raised more questions than it answered because scientists suspect that a virus has been sequenced earlier from the mine isolates and it existed inside the Wuhan lab what was renamed as RATG13 to deflect blame for a possible leak. RATG13 is 96.2% similar to SARS-CoV-2 but 100% similar to RA4991 or COV4991 which actually raises the question why was it renamed? A total of 150 alpha coronaviruses and only two beta coronavirus, of which only one was a SARS like beta coronavirus, that is, the RA4991, was detected. The same virus, RA4991, was renamed as RATG13, which is the next genetic relative of SARS CoV 2. Months before the first cases of the novel coronavirus disease were reported in Wuhan, online databases of viral samples possessed by the WIV started disappearing. The first of these disappeared on 12th September 2019. Fifteen others followed soon. Some of these were administered by Shi Zhengli, while others had been developed using funds from the NIH. National Institute of Health. There has been estimated to be at least a hundred unpublished sequences of bat beta coronaviruses in one of the deleted databases. One of the most shocking revelations in recent weeks has been the fact that Shi Zhengli's team carried out dangerous research that involved making viral pathogens more infectious or more lethal 
in a laboratory that did not have sufficiently high safety levels. The highest safety possible is in a biosafety level BSL for laboratory where researchers need to take utmost protection and wear elaborate protective gear every time they enter and follow a very stringent protocol to prevent any pathogens from being accidentally transported outside. Until recently, the WIV did not have a BSL-4 facility. Shi Zhengli is on record to say that her own coronavirus research was carried out in a BSL-2 or 3 laboratory. After the COVID-19 outbreak, China has stipulated that the cultivation and the animal infection experiments of SARS-CoV-2 should be carried out in a BSL-3 laboratory or above. But no matter how compelling the evidence may seem, questions about the origin of the SARS-CoV-2 virus are by no means closed. There are theories and evidence, but then there's also the other side, counter-arguments. The push to develop a coronavirus vaccine is moving at high speeds. The basic idea of a vaccine is that you would get a shot that contains weak versions of the coronavirus, which are too weak to cause an infection, but just strong enough to stimulate an immune response. The cells in your body will then create markers called antibodies that are specific for the coronaviruses. The antibodies then attach to the coronaviruses and prevent them from attaching to your cells. Our immune system then responds by attacking and eating these viruses. So if you catch the real virus later, your immune system will be able to overcome it. But that, all of that, researching it will take time. Till then, stay home, wear a mask, obey social distancing and wash your hands frequently to protect the most vulnerable, suppress the outbreak and to save the world. Thank you.